Physical activity during pregnancy can lead to shorter labor, lower chances of needing a cesarean, and a reduced risk of maternal injuries during delivery. Plus, active mothers also experience fewer pregnancy-related issues like back pain, nausea, and joint discomfort. But what about the impact on newborns? A healthy birth weight falls between 2.5 to 4 kilograms or 5.5 to 9 pounds. Babies born outside this range face a higher risk of developing chronic health conditions like type 2 diabetes and coronary artery disease later in life. Obesity and gestational diabetes are common causes of high birth weights. However, exercise during pregnancy can help bring birth weight into a healthier range, even if the mother remains obese. The secret lies in how the placenta adapts, which is by reducing the number of fat transporters while maintaining or increasing amino acid transporters, ensuring the fetus grows strong and healthy while protecting from high birth weight. Additionally, exercise doesn't lower birth weight to dangerous levels. In fact, exercise helps prevent low birth weight as well. For example, manganese is an antioxidant found in high levels in placentas from mothers who exercise regularly. Manganese helps protect against both low birth weight and early childhood obesity, setting up the newborn for a healthier start. Exercise thus helps protect from both low birth weight and high birth weight. But that's not all. One of the most serious pregnancy complications is preeclampsia, where the mother's blood pressure reaches dangerously high levels. Exercise has been shown to significantly lower blood pressure in pregnant women. During exercise, blood flow increases, causing greater shear stress on the blood vessels. This triggers the endothelial cells lining the vessels to produce more of an enzyme called endothelial nitric oxide synthase, which increases nitric oxide levels. Nitric oxide acts as a vasodilator, relaxing and widening the blood vessels, leading to reduced blood pressure and cutting the risk of preeclampsia dramatically. A healthier placenta can also help prevent preeclampsia, and one way exercise benefits the placenta is by enhancing mitochondrial function. Placentas in mothers who exercise show fewer deletions in mitochondrial DNA, which means fewer genetic mutations and stronger antioxidant defenses against oxidative stress. These adaptations are thanks to a process called mitophagy, a form of autophagy, or the cell's self-cleaning process, which is triggered by exercise. Does exercise help prevent gestational diabetes? Exercise stimulates favorable adaptations to blood glucose. During aerobic exercise, skeletal muscles can extract up to 100 times more glucose compared to when at rest. Weightlifting also enhances glucose regulation by depleting glycogen stores, which are then refilled with glucose afterward. Increased muscle mass from weightlifting enhances glucose uptake as well. These benefits can help prevent and even treat gestational diabetes. But what about the fetus? Aerobic exercise triggers the placenta to produce superoxide dismutase 3, or SOD3, a powerful antioxidant that travels to the liver of the fetus. Once inside the fetal liver, SOD3 triggers the activation of genes that improve glucose handling. This means that exercise during pregnancy can help protect the fetus against metabolic disorders like type 2 diabetes later in life. Thus, exercise during pregnancy both benefits the mother and has an incredible impact on the newborn's health too. These positive changes are largely due to the placenta. It's often said that a fetus is only as healthy as the placenta. But what does that mean? Considering the placenta consumes glucose, what happens when it grows larger? A larger placenta means more glucose is consumed by the placenta and less glucose is available for the fetus. Thus, a large placenta is not necessarily beneficial. The size and efficiency of the placenta directly impact the newborn's health later on in life. A small placenta has been linked to a higher risk of cardiovascular disease, while a thicker placenta is associated with a risk of sudden cardiac death. These observations point to the importance of what is known as placental efficiency. Placental efficiency is the ratio of the newborn's birth weight to the placenta's weight. It's how well the placenta supports the fetus relative to the placenta's own size. Imagine two babies with the same birth weight but one has a smaller placenta. 
That means the smaller placenta could produce a newborn of the same weight, meaning the smaller placenta is more efficient. Exercise is key to improving this efficiency. Exercise enhances blood vessel growth in the placenta, which improves oxygen delivery thanks to VEGF, a protein that stimulates the growth of new blood vessels. This leads to more capillaries, allowing for better oxygen delivery per unit area of the placenta. In fact, studies show that while exercise may not necessarily change the placenta's overall weight, it does seem to prevent the placenta from growing excessively large by making it more efficient at delivering oxygen and nutrients. Just like its effect on birth weight, exercise helps regulate placental growth, keeping it balanced, meaning a placenta that is not too large or not too small. What is the result? A healthier pregnancy, a stronger newborn, and an optimized start to life. Thank you for watching.